we are reintroduced to our protagonist, Riley, who has now entered adolescence. Unlike in the previous movie, Riley is dealing with a host of new emotions that turn her world upside down. Adolescence brings a whirlwind of changes, and Riley feels like she's on an emotional roller coaster. However, by the end of the film, she will learn to use these emotions to discover who she really is. We get to know Riley a little better as a student with excellent grades who has just entered adolescence. She's navigating the complexities of teenage life with the support of her parents, who attend every one of her ice hockey games. Ice hockey remains a central passion in Riley's life, providing both a sense of belonging and an outlet for her energy. Inside her head, her emotions, joy, anger, fear, and sadness are constantly seeking the best for her. Joy is always very positive, anger struggles to control her temper, fear is cautious and wary of potential dangers, and sadness often feels overwhelmed by the weight of growing up. We then travel to the home of the emotions, where Riley has built several islands of personality according to her preferences. These islands are formed by her own beliefs, which over time have become her true identity. Each island represents a core aspect of who Riley is, Family Island, Friendship Island, Hockey Island, and Goofball Island to name a few. Thanks to her good actions, Riley considers herself a good person, reinforcing her personality every time she does something kind, like allowing a friend to score points during a game. These islands are vibrant and dynamic, reflecting the ever-changing nature of Riley's inner world. The islands serve as the foundational pillars of Riley's identity, shaping her responses to various situations and her interactions with others. Riley's team wins a game with her two best friends, Bree and Grace. The school coach approaches them to invite them to a prestigious hockey camp for the best players in the region. Her parents and friends are thrilled because they believe that if Riley impresses the coach, she will be admitted to the best hockey team at school. Despite this excitement, Riley feels insecure, like any teenager, knowing she often makes mistakes while playing. The pressure to succeed and the fear of failure weigh heavily on her mind, adding to her emotional turmoil. The upcoming camp becomes a focal point of Riley's aspirations and anxieties, symbolizing a critical juncture in her adolescent journey. Joy steps in to protect Riley from discouragement by inventing a new technology that allows her to eliminate all of Riley's negative thoughts, such as shame, fear, and discomfort. By throwing these thoughts far away, Riley is left with only good thoughts that bring her joy and self-belief, forming a crucial part of her self-belief system. Joy believes that by shielding Riley from negativity, she can help her maintain a positive outlook and achieve her goals. This new technology, however, is not without its consequences as it disrupts the natural balance of Riley's emotions. The absence of negative thoughts creates an artificial sense of security that is fragile and unsustainable. One night, while all the emotions are resting, an alarm labeled puberty goes off on the emotions board. Joy tries to get rid of it, but a group of workers arrives, making significant modifications to the board and the entire scene, even changing the configuration of the emotions board. When they leave, Riley wakes up full of emotions like a typical teenager, crying, laughing, and feeling a mix of emotions all at once. This sudden shift leaves the emotions scrambling to adapt to the new and unpredictable landscape of Riley's mind. The puberty the alarm signifies the onset of a transformative period, ushering in a series of changes that the emotions must navigate. Later, Riley reunites with her friends and excitedly tells them about the camp. However, Bree and Grace reveal they will be studying at another high school. Although sadness is about to make Riley cry, the emotions step in to prevent it, so Riley acts as if nothing happened. She promises her friends they will always be together no matter what. This revelation adds another layer of complexity to Riley's emotional state as she grapples with the fear of losing her closest friends. The prospect of separation introduces a sense of impermanence and vulnerability, challenging Riley's emotional resilience. At the camp, Riley finally finds a moment to cry without anyone watching. She tries to calm down, knowing it would be embarrassing if the whole high school saw her cry. Anger doesn't want Riley to reunite with her friends, believing they are traitors. However, Joy believes she shouldn't abandon them. As Riley walks towards them, she accidentally bumps into Valentina, the high school hockey captain whom Riley admires greatly. This encounter leaves Riley starstruck and anxious about making a good impression. Valentina represents the epitome of success and popularity in Riley's eyes, intensifying her desire for acceptance and validation. In this moment, a new emotion, anxiety, 
appears. She is frantic, never stops talking, and wants to do everything at once. Anxiety is joined by envy, ennui, and a big guy called embarrassment. Sadness is very gentle with embarrassment, but anger is not happy with these new emotions. Joy, experienced and understanding, realizes these new emotions are part of Riley's teenage years. These new additions to the emotional team add to the chaos, each bringing their own unique challenges. Anxiety's presence underscores the heightened sensitivity and self-consciousness that accompany adolescence. Anxiety convinces Riley to abandon her old friends for Valentina, believing this will secure her a better future in high school. Joy disagrees with this, insisting Riley shouldn't abandon her friends. Despite this, Anxiety shows Joy that sticking to old ways would only make Riley look foolish in front of Valentina, jeopardizing her chances of joining the team. The tug of war between Joy and Anxiety represents the internal conflict many teenagers face as they navigate social hierarchies and strive for acceptance. Riley's internal struggle reflects the broader theme of identity formation and the pressures of conformity. Valentina introduces Riley to the Firehawks, inviting her to join their team. Anxiety is thrilled, but Joy makes Riley reject the invitation to stay loyal to her best friends. This decision leads to an awkward moment where the coach arrives and confiscates players' cell phones. Distracted by anxiety, Joy inadvertently causes Riley to burst into laughter, leading to more punishment from the coach and angering the other girls. This incident exacerbates Riley's sense of isolation and the pressure to fit in. The confiscation of cell phones symbolizes a loss of control and connectivity, heightening Riley's anxiety. During a break, Riley hears she didn't make a good impression on the Firehawks, feeling a mix of sadness and embarrassment. Anxiety steps in when Joy doesn't know how to handle the situation, leading Riley to Valentina, who comforts her by criticizing the coach. This calms Riley, and she returns to the game, torn between playing with the Firehawks or her best friends. The internal conflict intensifies as Riley struggles to balance her loyalty to her friends with her desire to be accepted by the Firehawks. Valentina's support provides temporary relief, but also deepens Riley's dependence on external validation. Anxiety's influence grows, making Riley abandon her identity and betray her best friends to play with the Firehawks. To solidify this change, Anxiety captures Joy and the other emotions, sending them to a vault where escape seems impossible. Anxiety uses memories of Riley meeting Valentina to alter her belief system, making her prefer the Firehawks over her old friends. The manipulation of Riley's core memories creates a distorted sense of self, further entrenching her in her new identity. This shift illustrates the malleable ability of memory and the impact of external influences on self-perception. The emotions find themselves locked up with a cartoon dog holding a magic bag containing dynamite. They use it to escape, defeating the guards in a peculiar way, but end up back in the vault. Joy devises a plan to travel through Riley's stream of consciousness to where her true identity lies, hoping to return to the control board and restore order. This daring escape highlights the resilience and resourcefulness of Riley's emotions as they fight to reclaim their place in her mind. The journey through Riley's stream of consciousness serves as a metaphor for the quest for self discovery and authenticity. Back in Riley's mind, Anxiety continues to deposit selfish and negative thoughts into her belief system, changing her personality to fit the popular group. Her best friends feel rejected, and Riley distances herself from them. Sadness manages to reach the barracks, but other emotions struggle as Riley's mind transforms, making Joy and the others nearly lose hope. The transformation of Riley's inner world reflects the external changes she is experiencing, creating a poignant parallel between her internal and external struggles. The barracks represent a stronghold of resilience and hope amidst the turmoil. The next day, Anxiety wakes Riley early to practice hockey. Valentina is impressed by Riley's dedication and invites her to dinner with the Firehawks. Anxiety ensures that Riley rejects her best friends to fit in with the Hawks. This shift in priorities is further cemented when the Firehawks show Riley a red notebook where the coach notes the player's performance. Anxiety continues to manipulate Riley, making her focus on being the best player rather than maintaining her friendships. During a game, Riley's selfish actions cause her to harm one of her best friends, leading to her being sent to the penalty box. Anxiety's influence turns Riley into someone who seeks approval from the popular group, distancing herself from her true friends. As the game starts, Anxiety has created a new identity for Riley, who believes she isn't good enough. The emotions become distressed, and Anxiety works harder, causing Riley to have an anxious breakdown. Joy confronts Anxiety, telling her she has no right to decide who Riley is. Hearing this, Anxiety steps back, and Joy uses all the good and bad experiences to create a new, balanced identity for Riley. 
Riley apologizes to her friends, feeling sincere regret, and they forgive her. Back at the control board, Joy helps Riley play calmly and enjoyably, finding a balance between emotions. This epiphany marks a turning point as Riley learns to embrace all aspects of herself. The reconciliation with her friends symbolizes the restoration of balance and harmony in Riley's life. Riley tells her friends about the coach's notebook, reaffirming their friendship. Despite not making it into the hockey team, she accepts the situation positively, showing her friends that genuine relationships matter more than social status. This acceptance reflects Riley's growth and newfound emotional maturity. The coach's notebook serves as a reminder of the importance of self-awareness and self-acceptance. Riley receives news that she made the team. The emotions are happy to be part of Riley's life, understanding that living in the moment and feeling all emotions is what life is truly about. Top of her class, kind and always nice to stray cats. Plus, she's now a 13-year-old teenager with braces. Riley's personality islands are stronger than ever, but Joy reveals something new forming deep inside her, core memories. Joy shows an example when Riley helps a new classmate, Grace, who had a little trouble with her things. Riley's usual kindness wins her a new friend in Grace and Bree. Joy explains that these core memories form Riley's sense of identity, and she firmly believes she's a good person. After winning the game, Coach Roberts announces a three-day camp for the top players. If they attend and perform well, they could join the team next year. At night, Riley's parents congratulate her, although she feels a twinge of sadness thinking her mistake might have cost her team the game. Joy presents an innovative creation, a protection system for Riley designed to push aside thoughts that aren't suitable right now. Later, Joy takes a core memory to the belief system, where Riley's most significant thoughts are stored. Sadness had never gone there before, fearing her clumsiness might cause a disaster, but Joy persuades her and they go together. They discover Riley's deepest convictions about herself, like I'm a great friend and I'm a winner. This place filled with positive thoughts and self-affirmation is the core of Riley's identity. Here, Joy and Sadness realize their teamwork is crucial for Riley's well-being and growth. Hours pass, and in the quiet of the night, Joy hears a strange noise. Despite her efforts, she can't stop what's coming. An unexpected group has arrived to demolish the Emotions headquarters. They have permission to expand the headquarters, shocking everyone. Right then, Riley wakes up startled because disgust, anger, and sadness were in charge. They don't understand what's happening because they barely touched the console and now can't control Riley's actions due to a malfunction. Riley's mother is deeply saddened by how Riley responds. The mom's emotions conclude this day was inevitable and start a long prepared talk about the changes of adolescence. Despite her mom's efforts, Riley continues to act up and in a moment of frustration she yells. The resigned emotions comment that they'll be living through this for the next 10 years. Just then, her dad arrives to take her to the camp with her friends. We notice Riley has a obsession on the current Firehawks team captain, Valentina Ortiz. Meanwhile, Disgust notices a strange look in Bree's eyes and suspects she's hiding something, though unsure what. We shift to Bree's feelings, and Disgust also notices Riley suspects something's up. Grace can't take the tension and confesses that Coach Roberts won't be coaching them anymore because they've been assigned to another high school. This means they won't be together next year. That was what her friends were hiding, but they clarify they'll at least see each other this weekend. Despite the initial sadness, Riley and her friends reaffirm their unbreakable bond getting ready to enjoy the camp, knowing their friendship will overcome any obstacle. Hours pass, and they finally arrive at the hockey camp. There, Riley starts crying, realizing she'll be alone. However, she spots Bree and Grace in the crowd. Then she bumps into Valentina Ortiz herself, and gushes about being her fan, telling her everything she knows about her. At that moment, a new emotion shows up, leaving everyone stunned. It's anxiety, accompanied by envy, embarrassment, and finally ennui. The latter reluctantly responds to Valentina when she invites her to meet the other team members, shifting the entire console from her seat with an updated application. Now anxiety presents her unsettling theory about Riley, imagining scenarios where she disappoints Valentina and her friends, eats lunch alone, and only her teachers know her name. That'd be one of the worst case scenarios possible. 
Just then, nostalgia appears, but she is told she needs about 10 years and a wedding to make her debut, so she is sent back to Wade. Back with Riley, Valentina introduces her to the other team members and invites her to sit with them. However, the young teen politely declines, preferring to sit with their best friends. At that moment, the coach confiscates their phones and sends them all skating, causing some irritation among the girls. Afterwards, they start practicing, but Riley can't seem to get anything right. She overhears the Firehawks team saying the coach won't include her if she doesn't take practice seriously. This warning makes Riley feel even more pressured, while her emotions inside her mind battle between anxiety and determination to improve. When the girls leave, Anxiety hatches a plan and has Riley approach Valentina Ortiz, who makes it clear the coach was tough on her too at one point, which means she cares about her progress. Valentina then invites her to join the team. Meanwhile, Joy tries to use the console again, but Anxiety stops her, explaining a good plan has many parts and firmly tells Joy to take a break. Meanwhile, Riley gets ready to play, and Valentina renews her invitation to join the team. However, Riley had already made a commitment to Bree and Grace, and true to her beliefs and promises, decides not to accept the invitation. But Anxiety can't allow it, forcefully removes the self-based identity core from its pedestal, and sends it deep into Riley's mind. She then tells the others that changes are scary but sometimes necessary. With this conviction, she makes Riley approach Valentina, leaving her best friends shocked by her decision. Anxiety asserts that Riley won't be alone in high school now, and makes a drastic decision. With embarrassment's help, she captures the emotions that have accompanied Riley for her 13 years of life and sends them to the vault. While Anxiety begins creating new beliefs for Riley, the emotions enter the place where Riley's secrets are kept. Here they meet Bluffy, a TV show puppy Riley liked. They then see one of Riley's crushes, Lance Slashblade, a warrior from a game that Riley and her friends enjoyed. And also here, we meet the worst Riley's fear, the darkness. Bluffy suggests the secrets should help the emotions escape from the vault, and they in turn will help them. Lance hesitates as they were all banished, and he's a cursed warrior with a weak attack, but eventually agrees to help them escape, though he struggles due to his curse. Finally, Darkness is convinced and releases them. Now the problem is how to get out of there. Bluffy uses Pouchy, a magical bag that pulls out many things it has stored, like explosive dynamite, which they use to escape the vault while Darkness stays behind, saying it's not her time yet. When they manage to escape, police officers try to stop them, but Lance, after a conversation with Disgust where he discovers his true ability, decides to confront them while the emotions plan is now to restore Riley's sense of identity, so she can be herself again. Joy will try to convince Anxiety to work together, but while Anxiety makes Riley get up early to practice, Valentina arrives and isn't thrilled about having two players so dedicated on the team, though she doesn't get too upset and invites Riley to eat with the team. Meanwhile, the banished emotions reach the stream that will take them to the depths of Riley's mind. Sadness points out they can't return without someone at the console to guide them, so someone must stay and go back to headquarters, so when they get Riley's sense of identity, they can return. And finally, Joy convinces her. While Sadness travels through the tube, the other emotions hop onto a broccoli to navigate through the flow to the depths of Riley's mind. Meanwhile, Anxiety is gradually bringing in more ideas and memories to reshape Riley's beliefs. Young Riley, on the other hand, is with the Firehawks team, who show her the red notebook where the coach notes down everything good and bad about each player. Later, they ask her what her favorite band is, and Riley mentions Dance and Glow. Anxiety steps in, suggesting she should name a band that the team likes. As they ponder, Anui takes charge and makes Riley respond reluctantly, plunging her into chaos. Bree and Grace arrive and tell her they love dance and glow and even went to the concert, but Riley continues to act bored and denies it all. After the team says goodbye, wishing Riley luck for the next day, which will be the final trial where the coach will choose who will join the team next year. Anxiety comments that Riley isn't ready because she can't be herself yet, 
lacking a solid identity with her own beliefs. Anxiety lowers more beliefs, while the emotions continue to search for ideas to return to headquarters. Anger tells Joy that she's upset because she's always happy, but Joy responds that they haven't even found their way back to the depths of Riley's mind yet, and Anxiety is right. Riley doesn't need them, and accepting that hurts. Anger consoles her, saying everyone makes mistakes and they will make more in the future, but they mustn't give up. They then grab a hose and climb to the top of memories to see the path they should follow. Meanwhile, Anxiety continues to devise plans to make Riley a spectacular player and get accepted into the team. It's then that embarrassment discovers sadness in headquarters, covering her with books so she won't be discovered. And now is when Anxiety starts thinking about every possible mistake for the final game, causing Riley to lose sleep. Joy and the others arrive and observe Anxiety's plan, starting a pillow fight to stop the workers from projecting negative thoughts. And finally, Riley starts sleeping peacefully. However, the situation isn't over. Anxiety gets an idea to read the red notebook to know what she needs to improve for the next day's game. Sadness warns Joy, who tells her to stop Riley from reading the notebook, just as Riley is about to read it. Sadness intervenes, having taken the app from NUI, but Anxiety discovers it, making Riley read the notebook where she finds her name. Unfortunately, she discovers that the coach wrote she isn't ready yet. So Anxiety then generates many ideas for Riley to improve in her last game. The next day, and now the positive emotions travel in a balloon towards headquarters. But Anxiety's ideas cause them to fall. Fortunately, Fear has a parachute and they manage to head to the depths of emotions. Meanwhile, Riley paints a red streak to resemble the Firehawks before starting the final game. But when her former best friends see her, they are deeply disappointed. Turning with Joy and the others, they arrive too late because Anxiety has just placed the final piece to create Riley's new identity. But upon doing so and returning, she realizes something is wrong. Riley keeps repeating that she's a bad person. Joy and the others descend to the depths of her mind where they find forgotten memories and the identity they had forged for Riley. Meanwhile, Sadness tries to convince Embarrassment to help her, and she succeeds. Embarrassment now cooperates, and together they bring back the emotions. However, Anxiety intervenes and causes all the tubes to break. The emotions feel powerless, and Joy doesn't have any more ideas. At the same time, the game begins and Riley does her best. Anxiety is in charge along with Envy, and Riley scores two points in the game, but she does it alone without passing to any of her teammates. Meanwhile, the other emotions call for Pouchy to take out all the dynamite he has and cause an explosion that allows them to reach headquarters. But now we have a problem because Riley is so aggressive that she clashes with Grace, causing the coach to intervene and send her to the penalty box for two minutes. On the other hand, Joy reaches the belief plant. Anxiety is at its peak and can't control herself, starting to break Riley's beliefs. At that moment, Joy, anger, disgust, and fear arrive to help. While Joy tries to calm her down, Anxiety refuses to leave the console, but Joy manages to stop her, and they finally break the bad identity to place the good one. However, this doesn't resolve the situation and Anxiety apologizes. Joy decides to rip out the identity they had forged over the past 13 years, plunging Riley into total confusion of her emotions, memories, and thoughts. One of her friends sees her in the distance, sensing her distress. This pivotal moment reflects Riley's intense internal struggle, where her emotions and beliefs are in absolute chaos. After a moment of deep reflection, Riley finally manages to calm down. Her friends Bree and Grace arrive worriedly to see her and ask if she's okay. Riley, with a mix of emotions, tells them she's not, that when they told her they were going to be at another school, she panicked and acted so irrationally. See, with tears in her eyes, she apologizes and clarifies that if they no longer want to be friends, she'll understand and hopes to earn their forgiveness. However, instead of words, Bree and Grace simply give her a warm and comforting hug before returning to the game. As her friends return to the game, Riley stays for a moment more, 
reflecting on the importance of honesty and openness in relationships. Finally, rejoining the game, Riley feels renewed and ready to face challenges with a new perspective, knowing she has her friend's love and support unconditionally. Now Joy is called by Riley to guide her, and filled with happiness and enthusiasm. Riley plays wonderfully and as a team, showing a special connection with each of her teammates. After the thrilling game, Riley meets Valentina and her team. The atmosphere is tense with anticipation and nervousness, as at 2 o'clock they will publish the list of those admitted to the team. Riley, with her heart pounding, feels a mix of hope and anxiety. Valentina, sensing her restlessness, offers words of encouragement and confidence, reminding her that regardless of the outcome, her effort and dedication have been remarkable. In the midst of all this tension, we discover that Anger has become friends with Pouchy, and now they will work together, which is a significant and positive change. And now, all the emotions will collaborate in perfect harmony, joining forces to support Riley at every step of her journey at this crucial moment. Nostalgia appears again, adding a touch of melancholy and reflection to the scene. However, once again she is expelled, because it is not yet her time to shine. Joy observing all this tells us with a smile that every part of Riley makes her unique. Every emotion, every memory, and every experience contribute to forming a rich and multifaceted identity. Later, when Riley's parents ask her how the camp went, and Yui automatically responds with a simple, fine. That was Inside Out 2. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.